This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel as we get fired up for a fine Friday morning. This uh, new morning routine I got going is working not too bad when I'm able to get up at uh, 6.33 in the morning and get a video cranked out. Hey, I don't mind that at all. Uh, but obviously we are 10 games remaining in the 2022-2023 NHL regular season and there is a lot, a lot, a lot to be decided about our Edmonton Oilers and our Edmonton Oilers finishing in the standings coming up here right away. But before we get to that, friends, what I just want to mention is if you're new to the channel, I know I've been hitting this very hard lately and I apologize if it's offended you at all because quite honestly, I've got a big mission to get done up in Cold Lake at the end of the month here and I'm just trying to gather up as many of you to support me for that big mission when we get up there so if you're new please subscribe if you're returning and you're enjoying the Oilers and it's been a good 72 games for you so far please leave a like on today's video and let's get into the meat and potatoes shall we no more housekeeping notes really it's only 6 30 how could I have housekeeping notes um, the Oilers have some decisions to make when it comes to free agency when it comes to contracts when it comes to how you build the team next year but here's the best part for the Oilers is kind of well as it sits we're gonna have that long run into the playoffs right I've got the Oilers winning the cup I've told you that five six times this season don't mind me if you think I'm wrong that's fine but what I will tell you here is the Oilers are lining up what looks to be a long run into the playoffs right last year we played the LA Kings in the first round and we went to the third round that was probably the longest spring of Oilers hockey we have had in 32 years to that point and uh, well guess what now the Oilers lining up to try and run it back right and you look now the Vegas Golden Knights after a win last night kind of pulled away from us I was hoping they'd lose last night because then the game tomorrow would be a devastating four-point game for the Golden Knights should have the Oilers won on Saturday night but now you're looking at a six-point gap the Oilers probably gonna have to settle for second in the Pacific Division obviously as long as we beat LA and beat Vegas both times each we should be just just fine to settle back in to our same spot from last year and you look to how this is all adding up in the wild card spots Seattle's at 86, Winnipeg's at 85, Nashville and Calgary are at 80 and 79 respectively. So the Oilers should be lining up to be second or third in the Pacific Division. No problemo. Uh, are they going to match the 104 point pace from last year? I honestly couldn't tell you we're on a big old five gamer right now so may maybe we continue to win and we get it done obviously right that's only eight wins away you win eight of your next ten you're probably as long as you beat Vegas and LA and all of those eight games you're probably maybe even in first place in the Pacific Division if all goes according to plan but obviously that's the biggest task here is everything has to go to according to plan and there's a ton of other things kind of happening in the background when it comes down to the Edmonton Oilers last week we kind of got a little bit of chatter about well the Oilers are going to have to move on from Brett Kulak the Oilers are going to have to move on from Cody CC next year if they want to make the salary cap work right we've already shipped out one for our situation overpriced defenseman in Tyson Berry excuse me there and when we're done there we go that's better yeah we already shipped out one overpriced defenseman for our budget in Tyson Berry turned him into Matias Ekholm the results have been phenomenal and obviously too Evan Bouchard has been absolutely lighting it up since the only downfall of that is Evan Bouchard needs a contract in the summertime and guess what you don't got a lot of room to make it work we obviously what kick-started the crazy success the channel has had over the course of this season is a video back in I want to say late November early December where I talked about what kind of trouble the Oilers are in with the salary cap should it only go up 1 million and obviously you see now over the past month or so we've heard 
the chatter that maybe Gary Bettman's open to uh, raising the salary cap by multi-millions just uh, in negotiations with the NHLPA. The NHLPA is getting a new head of uh, operations. There's a ton of stuff here laying around in the background for the Oilers, like I said, that is going to kind of play out over the course of the playoffs, right? I think if you talk about Cody Ceci and Brett Kulak, right, I, I, I think any Oilers fan would say either one's good with me. I can, I can part with either or. I'm not really attached to either. I mean, there's a lot of hate lately for Cody Ceci. I, I think just honestly it's attached to Darnell Nurse. Anybody that plays with Darnell Nurse would be getting the same hate at this point, especially if it was Evan Bouchard. But um, quite honestly, how I'd put it is if you've got two pieces on your defense that you either here or there if they're there, um, you, you should be able to quite honestly put it together that the playoffs and the next 10 games are going to determine what you do with those guys, right? Is uh, Every year somebody shines, and I think Brett Kulak, the reason he got such a starring role this year with the Oilers is that he was starring out there for us in the playoffs. Honestly, I was probably next to Duncan Keith just being Duncan Keith in the playoffs and Darnell Nurse being injured and everything, I noticed Brett Kulak because he was just doing his thing, doing the right things when the right things needed to be done all playoffs long. There was a time, I think I actually even said that he was our number one defenseman there at one point, shouldering a lot of minutes for us down the stretch in, I believe, the Colorado series. Now, the numbers might not be correct, the math might not be correct, but it, it, it was a gut feeling, and I can honestly tell you, when I get a gut feeling, that's uh, that's usually a good thing about players because when you are impressed by someone that just kind of steps in at the trade deadline, not a bad thing. And that's kind of where we get to see it run back this year for Brett Kulak and Cody Ceci to some degree as well. Both of them, I think, to a large degree would have a diminished role in the playoffs as compared to last year. Cody Ceci obviously being a top-pairing defenseman last year. And then two, Brett Kulak having to step up with Duncan Keith shouldering big minutes and Darnell Nurse barely able to move out there. Um, now you've got, sorry, excuse me, you've got seven defensemen, seven capable NHL defensemen of doing a big-time job for you. And, oh, by the way, you've got as well Evan Bouchard emerging. You've got Matthias Ekholm on the blue line. So when these playoff things kind of play out yes I could talk about the forwards as well but the forwards is always going to be a neither here nor there conversation for the Oilers because you're always going to have your Devin Shore you're always going to have your Derek Ryan you're always going to have your Matthias Janmark type players floating around this roster it's just the nature of the business when Leon and Connor get paid over 21 million together so that's something we don't really have to talk about. Obviously, we just hope that somebody becomes an unlikely playoff hero and we are good to go. But uh, two, Ryan McLeod needs a contract. You kind of get where we're going is there's a lot that has to be decided here. But the biggest thing that has to be decided is where your cap savings come from. And your cap savings most likely post-playoffs come from either trading Cody Ceci or trading Brett Kulak. Obviously, they're on long enough deals that I doubt a buyout happens, and I doubt a buyout is actually necessary for serviceable players like them. We could always talk about Jack Campbell, but we already did that in the last video, so we don't need to do that. Friends, I'm Tyson. This is Stolony TV. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm up on out of here.